Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good day to you, wherever and whenever you're watching. My name is Cap, and it's been a little while since we were last here. But welcome back to the Hideaway SMP. Today is quite a special day because we've got everyone on the whole server gathered together to fight the dragon. You can see under the Hideaway SMP sign there the makings of um, a little preparation area, uh, a war room if you like. And uh, over here in the courtroom is where we're all meeting together. It took a little while to get everyone connected, get technical issues worked out and stuff like that, but... Eventually we got together and we were ready to go. And all we needed was a rousing speech from Frost to ignite the fire inside us. It's speech time. Speech time! For far too long, we have lived under the tyranny of the dragon, but no longer. We will be the rulers of the sky now. Onwards! To victory! Yeah! Victory! To victory! Victory. victory! Let's However, go! Which way is victory? This Can way. I yeah. Oh, oh, wait. Go left. Left. <laughs> which oh. way is victory? Uh, I, don't, I don't have my stuff prepared. And so we all haphazardly piled into the nether portal and started asking each other where to go next because nobody knew. Oh, that little thing there on the screen is something I made for the video so that you know what you're listening to when it's not just stock music. Um, that's the kind of visual aesthetic you can expect over on my retro gaming streams on Twitch. If you're not following me there, go and take a look. You might enjoy yourself. We kept getting in trouble with piglins because nobody had any gold armor on. And, of course, we kept stopping to ask directions, because I think only one, maybe two people actually knew which way to go through the nether. And, of course, uh, with all the enthusiasm that we'd gained from Frost's rousing speech, we were still charging forth full of energy and emerged from a portal in a tiny little underground cavern. So, uh, yeah, after some scrambling around with that, uh, some people broke off and appeared to know where they were going. I wasn't listening, though. So I just went down a cave on my own and started heading towards the coordinates. By the way, the reason you're just listening to me rambling on over some replay mod footage is my recording of this whole event was an absolute disaster. I lost audio, I lost replay mod recordings as well. Um, but thanks to Cryptic for sending me his replay mod recording, which almost didn't work, uh, but eventually did. And thanks to Lily and Frost for sending me their audio and video as well. I was able to put all of this together for you. And here we all are, finally at the end portal, and Opiko's on fire, obviously. And uh, Frost just immediately jumps in before anybody says uh, whether or not we should go all together or wait for a countdown or... <laughs> I don't know. You can see there Cryptic's just throwing in some deep slate so that we can build a barrier around the platform in the end. And here we are in the end, and there's me making a little safety barrier. And once again, we're listening to the consoles playing their cover of the Lake of Rage theme from Pokemon Gold and Silver. I like this one because it's, it's kind of upbeat and fast-paced, yet also very chill. 
It's an interesting mix. The team immediately got to work, destroying the beacons and dodging dragon attacks. I think one or two of us did die pretty quickly. Um, but some of us were new to this. For a few people here, it had been the first time they'd ever fought the dragon. Um, here I am going for the shoot almost straight up technique for getting the, uh, the beacons. Whatever they're called. Success. And with this many of us, even on hard mode, we made pretty quick work of the dragon. But I'm gonna shut up for a minute and just let you watch. One of the funniest things that happened is if you watch on the right hand side there, it's Frost. Jumps in front of one of my arrows and explodes. <laughs> I did a little slow-mo thing. Just so that we can we can really save you the moment, you know. So here I am, switching to my bow, taking shots at the dragon. Here comes Frost to catch my arrow mid-flight. <laughs> it's almost done! It's almost done! Wait, Dragon. I my stuff! Oh, yeah! Get, his, get the stuff, guys! Get the stuff! Everybody get stuff! Get the XP! Somebody, somebody make a... Chest. I'm gonna get the dragon egg. See you. I'm gonna get the dragon egg. I'm the head. Oh, okay. I had a chest in my um uh, in my stuff that I, had, I don't uh, know which is. Oh, okay. God damn it's it! Fine. The beautiful chaos continued even after our great success, and some of us went through the portals to explore the rest of the end and look for end cities. I did my part by building a little staircase and adding trap doors to make the portal more accessible. Then I signed out for the evening. It had been wonderful spending time with everyone on the Hideaway SMP server, but it was time for me to sleep. That was a lot of fun. That's been uh, a long time coming, that, that dragon battle. Um, but next on the agenda... I have some unfinished business. I still have one final branch of the canal to finish. Note for later when I'm editing, uh, insert a map of the, like, the whole server with the little, with the branch that I want to do. <laughs> Where's my bed? There it is. As for materials, I'm kind of thinking I do have a lot of copper, but not a lot of copper for building with. Um, so I have enough that it could be used for accents. Actually, these blocks of copper, I could cut them into uh, cut copper to quadruple the amount that I have. Yeah, that's that's enough to like decorate the edges of something with, maybe. But as for the material. Oh yeah, I well I've never used bamboo planks. I could try bamboo planks. I know bamboo grows very quickly. Bamboo, and uh, I should have quite a lot of bone meal. Yeah, I've got some bone meal. See, this is why it's good to store up a lot of bone meal so that you can. Uh, you 
you can just you can quickly uh, gather up resources like this at short notice. <laughs> nice, that's a lot of bamboo. Couldn't couldn't I do this with like a a dispenser and a couple of observers? Probably could, couldn't I? If I if the the dispenser was set up to just keep spamming the bone meal, just do it in one spot. Yeah, let's get some redstone involved. It's it's not very often that I do that. An observer is made of redstone and nether quartz. I have one piece of quartz. <laughs> this is how uh, how little I visit the nether. Um, I believe there's a nether portal over at Lily's. I could probably do with my own. Here we go. Okie dokie. Quartz, quartz, quartz. I think someone has been mining a lot of quartz already. What's this? Free quartz? Maybe? No. Lots of netherrack, though. Nice. Where do we get the quartz from? Is there any unmined quartz? I only need a little bit. Just a modest helping. Aha, some quartz. There we go. job? Or do they have to be, like, undamaged? Let's find out. Oh, they can be anything. Okay. Dispenser. I don't know why I've got two dispensers, but uh, I've got two dispensers now. I only need the one. So, if I do that, then this is uh, taken away. Let's go get some bone meal. Put that in here. And then just just keep on just keep just keep on uh, oh the the bamboo's falling in. I think we can use more redstone if we get a piston involved. Th this could this could be a disaster. I don't know. <laughs> Yes, indeed. It has uh, crashed my game immediately. <laughs> Why has my game crashed? Now, hopefully, when I join in front of a rapidly firing piston, it's not going to crash. Try that again. Oh, no, immediate crash. Okay. 
Sodium is the issue. I don't have sodium. I have indium. <laughs> Let's disable sodium and we'll see where we get. Okay. Is it fixed? Yes! Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> That's exactly... That is exactly how I wanted it to work. That's perfect. Alright, I'm gonna grab some hoppers just to make life easier for me. Oh, if I enclose it... I should enclose it. Wow, look at me working out all for myself, all by myself, that, um, <laughs> you can just, how to make what is probably quite a common red, redstone contraption. But I'm figuring it out for myself. If I... Hmm, I should just add solid blocks here. There we go. So then. <laughs> I didn't... Uh, I didn't see that being a problem. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Jer Jeremy, Jeremy, please. <laughs> Bambooinator. It's complete. This machine is silly. Oh, well, that's an easy way to do it. Once I've got a full row of bamboo, that's enough for a stack of uh, bamboo blocks. So, like this. One row. One stack. Easy. I'm going to open it up so that more of the hoppers are accessible and there's more space for bamboo to fly around and find its way to a hopper. That should be fine, right? It's not going to, it's not going to fly out the back or anything. Right then, we've got the materials. Let's go and build. used to work perfectly. There we go. When I say we've got the materials, I mean we've got lots of bamboo. As for the rest of it though, uh, I'm, I'm not sure. I was thinking about using copper, which kind of takes a long time to go blue. Or bluish green. But, um... Opico has a shop selling lots of prismarine for one diamond, apparently. <laughs> I don't know if this is one of those, uh... Like... Each, each stack is one diamond, or... It's one diamond for everything. <laughs> what was that cartoon? You mean everything in this store for a dollar? Everything? And they just buy their entire stock for one dollar. <laughs> What's in this chest? Boats. Just as I suspected. Wait, am I? Yeah, I'm recording. Oh, 
I like this part of the canal. Some of the other hideaways have commented on the very low ceilings, but I was going for um, canal tunnels inspired by real life. Historically, they only ever dug canal tunnels to be as big as they need to be, which usually meant uh, the roof of your boat just about scraping the roof of the tunnel. Oh dear, we've got... We've got some stray boats. A Pico's shop is just up here, I believe. Needs a, needs a little pathway. The One Diamond Store. There, little pathway. Lots of pitcher plants. All the uh, all the sniffer stuff. Prismarine, prismarine, prismarine bricks. More prismarine. More prismarine. More prismarine. Oh, that's uh, that's that. That's Phil, shopkeeper Phil. Oh, and sea lanterns. That's great. Okay, so let's get sea lanterns. Let's have. All of that dark prismarine, because there's only one stack. Let's have ordinary prismarine for the foundations. And a row of prismarine bricks. 17 stacks? What's that? 17. Just throw it to fill. 17 diamonds. What? One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Round it up to twenty. Keep the change. Think that should be okay. Whenever I pick a building material, I like to pick the like whatever the rough or cobbled version of it is, because I always find that it makes it, it looks good as the footings and foundations of pillars and stuff. Alrighty then, let us make our way to that canal uh, extension. <sighs> I'm not an early bird, nor a night owl. I'm just some kind of permanently exhausted pigeon. Okay, this is going to be it. And it's got to be six wide. So finally, in one continuous burst of energy, I got started on the viaduct over cryptics. I've been working on this episode in some part or another for weeks now, and I'm glad I finally got it done. I wasn't really sure what I was doing with this viaduct, to be honest, so I was just kind of winging it. Um, here you can see how I don't like to destroy trees that are in the way. I prefer to carve through them, because it makes for a more interesting boat ride. But also, uh, the pillars. I, I had tried a diagonal archway, it just didn't work. So, I went for chunky pillars instead. Um, I thought I'd keep the small pillars at the start, and then go on to a big chunky one. And here's the opposite pillar. You can see I always like to make things look like they have strong, firm foundations, so I put cobble uh, below ground level down the side of that cliff a little bit. And this here is the lovely footpath from Cryptix, which is now interrupted by major construction works. That's exactly where the pillar's going. <laughs> it just happened to be exactly halfway between the other two pillars, so that's just the way it panned out in the end. Because I had more room for that one, it was going to be twice as high, so 
uh, space for two of those sea lands and elements. This is the point where I remembered all the bamboo that I'd been farming. <laughs> for this very purpose, so I broke out a lot of the existing prismarine that I'd put in, started replacing the bed of the canal with bamboo slabs. And once I knew where the viaduct was going, I finished the central pillar and, uh, yeah, I just got on with it. You can tell these parts aren't scripted, can you? <laughs> I'm just watching this now on screen and, uh, and talking about it. Ah, the most painful part of any aqueduct build. Because these are slabs with nothing underneath them, they don't automatically fill themselves in with water sources, so... This is the most sped up part of the footage that you're seeing of this build, because it took the longest. Um, I had thought about going underneath and filling in with dirt blocks, but that in itself would have taken ages. So I just filled my hot bar with nothing but buckets and got to work. So here's the completed aqueduct over cryptics. It ended up looking pretty good, I think. It's obviously, it's now a dominating feature, <laughs> like every other part of the canal. Um, and all that's left now is the final stretch towards Captain Moira's and Cassidy's. For the tunnel, I thought, well, I'm, honestly, I'm just going to leave that as dirt and stone, because, because whatever, man. <laughs> um, but going on from there, I could see this carving through that cherry tree. I'm looking forward to matching the building materials with Captain Moira's floating base. And then we continue into the cliffside alongside Casties and that branch of the canal will be complete, but I'll save that for another day. As always, I'd like to thank you so much for being here throughout this series. The support has been really, really heartwarming. Um, <laughs> like and subscribe, tell your friends, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.